Due to poor conditions that won't make fine audio recording possible, I will be Epoidato's proxy for today. Here's what he has to say. The seed idea of pixel paranoia came from an experience from 2016. Around July or August, we were receiving series of ghost calls on our landline phone. That got me thinking while I'm having my tinfoil hat on. What if it's the other way around? You picked up the phone, and then someone is talking over at the other end of the line, but it's not you they're talking to. In the same year, a co-worker made me see the videos shot by Peter Scully, including the infamous Daisy's destruction. That, again, got me thinking of an idea of a film about criminals looming around dark web. I even got a line in my original script where Angela's character, Lily, talks about the capture of Scully, which I unfortunately removed from the final cut to meet festival runtime requirements. On the mark, get set. I went on and thought of the present and the past. High-speed internet of the present, and VCD of a not-so-distant past. The Desaparecidos of today and the Desaparecidos of the past. Surveillance is something that I've always been fascinated about ever since my first encounter with Paul Virilio back in 2014. While this film in particular is not in praxis of his notions of logistics of perception, the film still owe its consciousness to Virilio. The film is also indebted from a lot of inspirations. 2000s sex video scandals. 90s snuff films. Japanese gore horror videos. J.D. Malero's desktop cinema in videophilia. And of course, that last sequence was stolen straight out of a David Lynch short film. I just imagined the dark web video market as an organized, albeit fragmented, kind of enterprise. I remember Q Cinema screening this film in the right manner by having this run the last of the batch back in its premiere. I wasn't able to see it, but based on the stories I gathered, the gimmick at the end worked. The last film I made was way back in 2018. If it wasn't from Nagilngig's invitation, I wouldn't have made another film. In between unemployments, I try my best to teach, although it seems like the times is not best for schools either. The lockdown got me engaged with cinema more from its very primitive and distant point. As an audience. And as an audience, I look with an intention to learn. Why? Cause I don't know what else to do. The condition is ripe to study cinema because everything seems to temporarily stop. We can now scrutinize cinema from angles without the anxiety that we might miss out things that might develop along the way. This kind of condition brings cinema audiences during the lockdown in a new sense of appreciation. But this sense of appreciation, the new aesthetic experience, does not belong to cinema exclusively. This involves a lot of things that surround and circulate various screens. And this deterritorialization of cinema from its place of aesthetic privilege to the flatness of the age of the images is, I think, what made the cinema complex, the film scene, worry at the present in their unconscious. And so, here we are. We're doing this out of fear. I share the same fear of irrelevance, who didn't? Along with other fears, real ones. But the new aesthetics is sharing something that is quite new for us. A depersonalization of seeing. We now consciously acknowledge that we do not own the images that we see. These images are shared and what it means is not just for us anymore. Right now, this new aesthetic is caught in the impression matrices. In the sphere of likes, thumbs up, shares, reviews. We are more than ever, trapped in what Jonathan Beller calls the attention economy, especially in a world where people are locked down in their homes along with computer or mobile phone screens. Our fear of irrelevance comes from the flattening of our images with all the other images, the uncinematic ones, and are judged in the same manner. What these reveal to us is our real function in the complex of human interactions. We, image makers, are nothing but mere distractors. Our images are mere grains in the flux of countless pixels. Welcome to the pixel desert of the real.